This is the Chairman's Corner, a vantage point for gaining perspective. On this show, we will be having conversations with people who deliberately shape their worlds. Success is rarely by accident. So, we seek to see how the hand of fate has created these exceptional individuals. So who are the people mapping the way to become the players in the game of life? the disruptors and the trailblazers. From the Chairman's Corner, let's ask some questions. Hi, and welcome to the Chairman's Corner. Today, I have a beautiful guest who's joining me, and I'll let her introduce herself. My name is Marilyn Blockland. Thank you so much for joining me on the Chairman's Corner. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Um, so I'd like to start this off a bit easy. Would you like to tell me what a day in your life is usually like? Like, you know, what are the few things you do, like without fail, every day? Ride through Nairobi. <laughs> Sometimes like a headless chicken, okay. trying not to die. <laughs> um, I, um, I'm a personal trainer. You're a personal trainer. So my appointments start as early as 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. and sometimes they end as late as 8. Okay. Every, every day is different. Um, so it's a mix of training people at home, training people at my studio. Um, yes, so I'm, I'm basically all over Nairobi. Okay. And that's, that's Monday. To Friday. When you say ride around Nairobi, you mean like on a motorbike? On a motorbike. Um, when did you start riding? Two years ago. Wow. Okay, so that's pretty recent. Pretty recent. Have you always wanted to, you know, learn how to ride nope. motorbikes? So what is it? Traffic? Is I that is that what? I remember one day I was sitting in my car. Yeah. And I was moving from the junction to Adams Arcade, mm -hmm. which is about three four kilometers. I was stuck outside the junction for three hours. And that's what you said? This At one point, people left their cars. Like, oh, okay, let me go sit on the Like some, someone just left, locked their car. Uh, <laughs> is it? I'm out. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, just, I just lost <laughs> my mind and I was like, this isn't working. I'm losing money. I'm losing clients. Yeah. What can I do to move around in Nairobi easier without being caught up in this traffic? What, what kind of bike do you drive? Uh, right now I'm on a Kawasaki Z800 naked bike. Did you get it like here or you like shipped it in? I bought it locally. Okay, how yeah. much did that cost? Like did you break bank? You don't have to get into the details. But... It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Okay, as, as someone who likes bikes myself, what bike would you suggest I get first, like my first bike? Um, I'll talk about my experience. Yeah. So I went to a dealer and I was like, it was a 600cc sport bike, mm. like a, a crotch rocket, mm. you know, the, the yeah. ones where you are. Yes. So he's like, do you know how to ride? Nope. He's like, okay, then this is not the bike you to start on. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, okay, what do you suggest that I start on? And he's like, start on like maybe a 250 or a 300cc. Yeah. So it's best to start on a 250 or a 300, have that for X amount of months. Just do a lot of seat time, and then from there, um, you can graduate to a higher. Yeah, you kind of also know. Um, and then I started on an, on a naked bike, so it was upright. Mm. Um, so I one learned what it's like to ride in Nairobi on a basically very manageable and light fighting bike. Fighting with all the do these and yes, yes. And then from there, my second bike was a sport bike, six hundred cc Jixer. I had to let go of that bike because it had too many issues, but that bike was the love of my life. 
<laughs> um, and I shopped around, shopped around, and I couldn't find another clean bike. Mm -hmm. So I settled for a naked bike. Ideally, I prefer being on a sport bike. Okay. And now, when I was going through your profile, and you just mentioned fitness, um, what kind of experience have you had like in your journey of fitness? Like, what got you into it? Necessity got me into it. Yeah. I needed a job. Um, I didn't have any qualifications, so I went to the gym where I used to be a client, mm. um, and I was like, dude, I need work. Can I clean? And then, like in the gym? Yeah. Okay. Work is work. Work is work. Okay, yeah. I respect that. Um, so then the owner was like, mm, no, I think you can do something more than just cleaning. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. So then um, I like interned, so you know, I would take his kid home, I would go get coffee. Basically like his PA almost. Not PA, uh, more like errand person. He <laughs> um, is like a very like classy way of saying it though. Yes, um, okay. no, not PA. Um, and then um, I ended up modeling, ended up doing other things. Mm -hmm. And then when I was 21, I decided to take fitness serious now. Mm -hmm. 21, I was like, okay, I need to take life serious, start making money, yeah. Okay. I mean, already from the first two things I've asked you, I already see you have a sense of adventure. Where do you feel like you got this from? I have no idea. It's just inbuilt? Like, I feel like you just... It's not. No. I was the awkward kid in school. Mm -hmm. I loved sports, but I was never team captain yeah. or top athlete. Yeah. No, no. Um, but as I've gotten older and as I've... Um, worked on my body more, worked on my diet, worked mm. on moving. I've gotten physically like more athletic, athletic, but I was never like this and I was never adventurous. I hated getting hurt. Okay. Um, so I, funny enough, as I've gotten older, I sometimes give my parents a bit of a heartache. It seems I'm, I'm getting hurt more seriously of late. Because of the riding. The riding yeah. and other activities I do. Uh, okay. Tell, like what, what other activities? Do weightlifting. Something? Okay. I pulled my back a few times. Like, oh, I'm not, I can't move. Once like, it was so bad, I could barely walk out of the gym. <laughs> Are you just trying to punch above your weight or you're just like, not today, I'm going to hit this target today. Yeah, you know, you, you're, you're already on your max and you're like, oh, let's I add a little add bit more weight. And then your yeah. form goes and that's it. And, um, yeah. Even with, um, I also do um, kickboxing mm -hmm. and you have a person kicks me the wrong way or I'm holding a bag for a client. Even you know? fall the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. One time a client kicked me in my ribs. He was supposed to kick the bag and then so the, I'm holding the bag. Yeah. He was supposed to kick this side but and he kicked kick this, this side. side and he kicked me right in the rib. Oof. A whole hundred kilo guy. I'm and I was like, kick the bag. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> Could you tell me what a favorite quote you have that really resonates with your life right now? That's deep. Mm. That's deep. Um, maybe, yeah, something describing your life right now. Even it could be a metaphor. Um, I don't. I don't have any. What What I can say is, because because my day to day is pretty like, it, it just does this. Yeah. It's up okay. and down. Swinging. It's a roller coaster. The one thing I focus on is smiling and just choosing to be happy. Yeah. Even so, so for me, the whole my whole jam is just happiness, happy, happiness. positivity, yeah. no matter what. Otherwise, I better start digging my grave. Uh, my you grave, know what I mean? Grave. I mean, I can resonate with that. I, yeah. I'd like to think I'm also a very um, vibrant and happy person. Yeah. Um, okay. With the kind of work you're doing now, um, what kind of people or interactions do you find yourself building or getting into? I love my clients. Yeah? Like what, what makes that special for you? They're people of all walks of life. One, one of the privileges I have with my job is meeting so many different people from diplomats to housewives and mm. anything and everything in between. There's one time I trained a lady who was a um, stripper, but okay. she was paying for her college with stripping. Yeah. This is people you see hear of on TV shows, but I, I met this person. She was down to earth and real, and none none of the labels you would put you would on expect. a woman like that. Yeah. Um, I, sometimes clients, you know, tell me their struggles, vice versa, and that's also a nice insight because sometimes you know it, it feels very alone. Mm -hmm. So so the beauty of my job is it's personal. It's I can personal. Imagine, like telling someone like yo, you are, didn't see in the gym today. Are you okay? Exactly. Yeah. Boom, um, and and also just having conversations. So. 
we are to a de- I am to a degree friends with my clients mm-hmm. during our session. Um, and, and, and that's that's beautiful. It's almost like therapy, I would like to imagine. Yeah, a yeah. bit, yes. Okay, a bit, a bit. so you have a PhD in like people, literally. Exactly. Okay. Um, what would you say, I mean, I, your, your work doesn't look easy, and especially when I was going through your profile, I noticed you now you do like pole fitness. Like what made you also do that transition or got into it? So, um, I've been doing personal training for a while mm-hmm. and trained an ocean of people and found that I'm better off dealing with a handful of clients. So like a very niche like kind of setup. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I max um, train only five people per month for personal training. Oh, so we're okay. looking at people who need to lose weight, build muscle, um, or just keep fit. Yeah. Those are the three areas I, I deal with. Before I'd have 39 people. And at that point you're like, I mean, it's good money, but like- It's not worth I'm, it. I'm sure the calendar was so hectic. So hectic yeah. and I wasn't working at my optimum. Yeah. Um, so then obviously the, there's, um, it was like a void. I'm like, okay, I've got, got five people now. Um, I had been doing pole dancing um, before, but the bulk of my clientele base was personal training mm. and a small part was the, the pole dancing. Yeah. So I, I shifted that. Now the small part is personal training, only five people in a month. Mm. And then the majority is the studio sure. and helping, you know, teaching people basically to hang upside down on a pole. Yeah. Also because personal training for me is very exhausting. So I only want to deal with as little people, people. as possible. Also for your own energy, yeah. It's very intense because yeah. someone's here struggling with their body. Um, whereas with the pole dancing, there's no struggle. You come, you hang upside down. You, you have fun. Yeah, yeah, it's more like a party. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, then let's bring it back to like, things which are more personal. Um, what's one thing that you believe to be true that maybe not everyone necessarily agrees with or also believes? Wow. Um, you need to work hard mm. and you need to in the beginning when you're fresh you need to work to the bone I, I get a lot of people coming up to me and it's like oh you're privileged oh this must come easy um, like they base, assumptions about you based on how i talk based on my looks based on the things i have my bike and yeah. what and they're like oh and then and then and then they've given up in life not knowing that, dude, I've come it's from absolutely nowhere. I went knocking on someone's door, please hire me. Yeah. I need money, I need food. And they did. And, and prior to that, I had tried applying for jobs, but honestly, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna get anywhere. Yeah. Um, so so a lot, I, I see a lot of people, like a lot of Kenyans um, give up. And I'm like, don't, keep trying. Keep Yesterday, I was, last night I was having a discussion with my, uh, with my mechanic. Mm. He opens his doors to young guys. To come and learn how to work in the shop. He even has accommodation for them at the shop. shop like, oh, if you don't have a place to sleep, you come. I, I, so I that they you. don't have to stress with bus fare, because some Traveling. of them live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You stay here. He had one guy stay for a year. Save that money, set himself yeah. up nicely. Now he has a nice place, he has a nice job, and he's only, what, 20? And he's moving. Because my mechanic gave him that opportunity. That but if that mechanic had given up, if he didn't continue knocking on doors, then what? Then what? Then you wouldn't be able to touch someone else's life. So you, no matter where you're at or where you come from, you, in the beginning, when you are no one and have nothing, you need to grind whether you like it or wow. not. And don't make the assumption that those who you aspire to, that they didn't have to grind. Don't assume. Yeah. Actually, the opposite is true. Those who had everything handed to them, they won't be in the spotlight. Yeah. You know, they'll be in the spotlight for the wrong reasons. They're vanilla almost. Yes. Yeah. But those that you see out there and they're popular and they've made it, they've really come from, you know, from, 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 from somewhere. From somewhere. Okay. Um, let's just make it a bit light. Tell me something, like a story from your childhood that you just can't get out of your head. There's too many of them. Just pick, I don't know, out of the top five, just pick something. I wasn't that adventurous as a child, but if I were to tell people about my childhood, it's the amount of times I got like burnt, or the one time I walked into my dad's cigarette. Um, those, 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 those are moments I remember from my childhood when yeah. I did like dumb things and, and got hurt. And I kind of relate that to being an adult, and now I'm like seriously getting hurt. So I was like, okay, Marilyn, we need to. <laughs> There's a correlation. We, we need to fix to, something yeah. here. <laughs> but but I think that the number one thing out of all 
that kind of sums up my childhood that I hold on to mm. is that no matter what, my parents was always a very loving home. No matter where we were, what we were going through, yeah. my parents always tried to be loving. And I'm seeing that even more now as an adult. In terms of like your relationship with them, you're more friends and you understand them a bit more. I definitely understand them more because yeah. I'm more of an adult now myself. So, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about life lessons. I mean, we've already talked about how we should be and how we should appreciate the process. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me about a lesson that you learned early in life? It, it could be a good, bad lesson and that really sits with you up till now, what you carry forward in how you approach things. I'm very naive. Mm -hmm. I need to be very careful with people. I'm also very like open. I'll high five anyone. I'll have conversation with anyone, but I need to be careful. Because then if we're having great banter, so, so, so basically you can have a whole ocean of people that are maybe your friends or acquaintances, but you need, but to, be, you need to be very careful. But who you, you know, share your space with and your energy. With. Exactly, exactly. Because not everyone has good intentions, especially when maybe, this is, this is just my, this is my experience um, over the past couple of years, is yeah. that sometimes people can be backstabbing, you know. That's true. Not everyone has the best interests like for you. Yeah, and I'm pretty naive, so I never saw it coming. So that has stayed with me and I kind of remind myself to not get carried away okay. and being too nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, talk about being too nice. You talked about happiness. What does happiness mean to you? My bike. <laughs> that makes you happy. You wake up in the morning, you're just like, mm, that's my bike. I start the end, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> um, wow. My happiness is being productive. Mm -hmm. um, and hence, I've also like shifted from doing pole dancing more because um, I kind of got a bit like bored. Yeah. Um, so being productive, and for, for me when I'm productive, I'm happy, especially when I'm being productive in things that I like doing. I, I feel alive. And I, and I guess another reason why maybe I'm sometimes a bit too hooked on my bike is because I have moments where I'm like, I feel just feel a bit like, uh, and I just go somewhere and I just open a throttle. Wow, I'm and like, just yes. take off. So I have learned that I'm maybe a bit of a thrill seeker. Yeah, that's, that's what I was getting at. Yeah, I had, I had someone point that out one day to like, you're a thrill seeker, aren't you? And I'm like, no, no. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> but then when I look at little things that I do, that mm. I just do for kicks, I'm like, okay, maybe I am a uh, little. Uh, like a smidge. But I was never like that as a child. All right. It's kind of come up as an adult. And um, I'm sure you've heard like, well, like some of Kanye's music. In a way, it says like, don't let me get in my zone. I'm definitely in my zone. What zone or space is that for you? Like, you know, people have meditation where they read or they, you know, take a walk. What's your space and your zone? Is it like when you're on your bike? Like, my, my zone is when I'm working really hard. And when I'm working at 100%, mm -hmm. it means I have a maxed out on the amount of clients I can have. Cash is coming in, great. That's my zone. It's yeah. it's so bad that when I check into the house and you try and talk to me, I'm still in work mode. Yeah, so you have to learn how to switch off as well. Afternoon, but that 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 zone is is sweet, and and everything is smooth mm. to my appointments. My appointments are smooth. Everything, cash is checking in. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could have a conversation like this with someone from history, someone who's still alive today, um, who would that be and why? Another deep question. Um, it's a chairman's corner. Yes. We go deep. You do, you do. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You're like picking my brain. Um, woo! Two, two, two people. Okay. Number my one. grandma, who mm -hmm. passed away. My, my, my white grandma. Mm -hmm. um, were, you, were, you, like, were you born when she passed away? Like, she she was around till 2000. Okay. Um, so you're still pretty young. I was. Generally. I was, I don't know how old I was. Like maybe. Nine ten. Nine, ten. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, w I would like to talk to her about how life was in Europe, how her childhood was, what she did as yeah. a wife, as a mom, as a working woman. And I'd also like to ask the same questions to my um, great grandmother who doesn't speak in English. Like now you're. On, on the Kenyan on, side. On the Kenyan side, okay. Because life here also is very different. In school, we're taught one thing. 
And I'm now learning as an adult that, uh, wow, things, things were really different here in 1910, 1920. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, I, I would love to pick their brains and in doing so, learn from them and like improve on myself. Because sometimes the old ways were good and we can pick things from, from that them, and practice that. Things are meant to change, people change. True, yeah. but it's, it's Sometimes I feel like we're kind of missing things. Like things get lost in translation. Things, yeah. Certain lessons get, you know, passed yeah. down, but others don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, when when you go, like when now you sit down, you've you know had a good shower, you've had a good meal, you're about to enter bed, and you lay down. Maybe you say a prayer, or what things are you like praying into existence for, like currently right now? Like what what are you praying for right now? Health, wealth. To walk in my in my purpose, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I pray for everyone around me um, that they get the blessings that I have. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it's just just about that. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, okay. In terms of um, like, imagine an alternate universe, um, or like you know the multiverse, all these things. If you weren't doing what you're doing now, what else do you think you could be doing? Probably be a housewife. <laughs> <laughs> Legit, like yeah, you know, I just take care of the kids. You know. I, d I don't know. Um, woo! I would either be an actress, which mm -hmm. which was my dream. Yeah, it still can be. I mean, look, we're on TV now. Yes, true, yeah. true. Um, it was it was my dream to like um, do Hollywood or something. Yeah. Um, and then also at one point uh, was my dream to become a clinical psychiatrist. Wow, okay. um, but I think between the three, I would, um, yeah, just housewife. Okay. Have the mans do all the running does, around. I can just chill. Get your nails done. And all yeah, that. you know, just give me some allowance. Okay. Basically the way my mom was actually. Okay, fine, since we're on the topic. Yeah. Now imagine, maybe not housewife, you have all the money in the world, all your needs are taken care of. What would you be doing? I would be helping others. Yeah, um, like charity work or like you know working at children's home, that no, kind of thing. Or what, I what, what do you mean helping others? What I would tackle, which is actually an idea that my dad had when I was in my teens, mm. but unfortunately that project didn't go through. Um, he had come up with like um, a container home. Okay. Um, and you know those containers come in all sizes mm. and it's very portable. Um, if you if you take any slum, you get rid of the Mabati structure yeah. and you put a container. It's safer, it's enclosed, More it can durable, be moved, yeah. it's, it's neater. Um, so what I would do if I had all my needs taken care of, I'm hunky-dory and I have just cash lying around, yeah. I would go there and I would start that project. The project that my dad wanted to do, I would start it with my exactly. own money. The reason his didn't go through is because he was seeking funding. And people... From yeah. our greats, yes. <laughs> 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 so that, that's, that's what I would do because on, on my motorbike I commute and I sometimes go through places and I come in contact, you know, with... with, with anyone and everyone and I'm like guys it's such a it's like, we, we need to fix this yeah. you know that's that's passion right there and yeah. but I mean think about the future that could still happen it could yeah. it could you never know all right um how I want to like pick now on matters of the heart how do you love like what are your views on love it could be love in terms of a relationship sense it could be love in terms of a friendship sense like motherly whatever you want to call it you know love Love makes the world go round, you know, <laughs> okay. love, love, um, love, love is important, but I, I think we shouldn't get too lost. Like your mother's love, your friend's love and your spouse's love are three different things. Yeah. Um, if it's, if all three are unconditional, that's great. But if like with your friends or your spouse, it, it might not be, you shouldn't get too caught up in that. Yeah. So I, 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 I believe in love. I love love. I love relationships. I'm one of those weirdos, like, oh my God, look at them, they're so cute. <laughs> um, but then at the same time, we also need to use our brain. Mm. See, see, the difference between men and women is... Logic and rationality. Boom, boom, okay. boom. I didn't say that though. Uh, so <laughs> when, when, I, when I talk for myself and my experiences as a woman, I would get lost in love and I would lose logic. Mm. Um, so it's a, it's a nice blend of both that 
you guys, some men need to learn to love more. They have logic and women need to be more logical yeah. because they have the love in them, you know. The kind of balance. Yeah. All right. Um, are you more of a book person or a film person? Um, film. All right. Tell me three films that you either really love or that, you know, kind of change your life, like made you see things differently. <sighs> wow. Okay. Um, Hotel Rwanda. Okay. That one, I was like, whoa, dude. Um, then there was another one, uh, Kunta Kinte. Yes. Um, yeah, th that, that's right now what's popped up in my, in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the lighter side, when I just want to switch off and maybe, be, maybe I don't want to get too deep, maybe I don't want to like eyeball, mm. um, I'm like a Marvel comic. Oh. And DC, yes. hardcore, the... dying, okay. obsessive fan. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if I've had a hectic week yeah. and I and I don't want to think too much, I'd watch something light like that. Like something light. And just get lost in it. Um, but if I want to watch something deep, then yeah, th those are the type of movies that I that I like. Okay. Now, as we wrap up, um, I usually ask this question at the end. You have the chance to have your bill a billboard all over Nairobi, even, let's say, let's make it more grand. Like, imagine you had a billboard in every major city, like in the world, and you can have whatever message you want on it. What would it be? Be happy, be respectful, be nice. Simple as. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as. Okay, at the end of the show, I have a small segment where people pick random questions from this oh, cup. that's what that is. Yes, that's what that is. Have a go. Read it out. Would you rather be a kid forever or an adult forever? I'd rather be an adult forever. You'd rather be an adult forever. Yes. Because adults get to do nice things. Yes. <laughs> and play with big toys. Like ride bikes. Yes. <laughs> okay, do you want to pick one more? Uh, yeah. Okay. What was the last gift you gave to someone? Um, I got my mom a dress. Oh. That's sweet. And it was a like a really nice tight dress. <laughs> did, did she like appreciate it? Like she did. Yeah. She did. Did she wear it? Like, oh, look, this dress you got me. So m my mom has been wearing like um, looser clothing. And growing up, because my mom's quite young. She's fifty one. Mm. I'm, I'm thirty. Um, so growing up, she was in her twenties and thirties. So she would wear like mini skirts, boots, mm. you know. But then somewhere along the line, that stopped. But she still has the same body though. You know, gotta, gotta love. African women. Yes. Black don't crack. What? <laughs> um, so I got this dress and I'm like, this would look banging on her. So yeah. she's really shy. She came out, she's like, oh my God. And I'm Thank like, you. yours, mom. <laughs> Do it. Yes. <laughs> 51 and hot goals. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. All right. Um, I'm really happy I got to share this experience with you on the Chairman's Corner. And this is exactly what I want this show to be about, about people, experiences. And I hope people have learned something new you know, from this whole experience. Yeah. Likewise. So yeah, thank you for joining me. Thank and you for having me. I hope we can engage more with, you know, like-minded people. Yeah, me yeah? too, me too. Thank you. Cool. Yeah.